Good, everybody, and welcome to your 5-8 Advanced Audit Training. My name is Angel Burgos. I'll be your instructor for this session. Uh, today, we're going to cover the Advanced Audit Utility. The Advanced Audit Utility allows us to basically track everything that goes on within our system. So, about what we're going to cover today. A, part, a product overview, basically take a look at the purpose of the advanced audit, which I just mentioned. Uh, take a look at the system requirements briefly on the installation. Um, we really don't handle the installation, so we're not going to get too deep into it, but we will uh, high level take a look at it. We're going to get our groups and rights and permissions and what's required for us to actually utilize the application. We'll take a look at the system admin setup and what we need to do within system admin to be able to utilize advanced audit. And we'll take a look at the uh, and the event setup in EHR in EMP, and in EPM. And then finally, we will do a full-on overview of the application from start to finish. Um, advanced auditing records activities showing system threads of access, change, and tra tra changes, and transactions. Peer review of audit logs may be useful for detecting unauthorized access to the patient information, providing for forensic evidence during investigations of breach to patient privacy, team disclosures of PHI, and to patient privacy concerns regarding unauthorized access by family members, friends, or others. I think compliance with regulatory requirements. So what does all that mean? It essentially means that we're tracking everything that's going on with the system, as I mentioned previously. So again, you'll, you'll go in, anything from your login to navigating and finding a patient will be tracked within the system. All right, just keep that in mind as um, you start to utilize the system. I know that there's been instances with the Octomom and Britney Spears and things like that where people were taking a look at high-profile patients for no reason. Um, guess what? They can lose their job. It is a direct violation of HIPAA, and we can track that, and you can report on it and, and have vital information to um, proceed with those types of, of, of hearings. So just keep that in mind when you're dealing with the advanced audit and our application altogether. What is auditing? Auditing. Modelable security auditing system, centralized data, extensible. Uh, this is based for performance, good for 5.8 and meaningful use. Um, probably HIPAA compliant and configurable. No. Required for 5.8 and meaningful use. Yes, it is required, and we're to say that it's required. Um, uh, the thing is that if your end users are not trying to meet meaningful use, um, do they have to have certain things on? Not so much. Now, privacy and the HIPAA compliance, guess what? They're going to need it. They need to be able to, to prove uh, those particular values for uh, the privacy. Basically, who's who's accessing what uh, documents or what, what patient's charts and that sort of thing. Um, the nice part about it is it, it is configurable. So it's really up to the end user to determine uh, how they're going to set it up and what they're going to actually track. The nice thing about the advanced audit versus the NG audit, which is our previous version of this, and I'm going to say previous, it was a, a side version, it was the initial version of it, um, is it, it didn't impact the um, database as much as it did previously. The old version it straight up killed our system. I mean, to the point where you would run a, a audit, an NG audit, and you had to make sure that it was only on for those values that you were trying to track. Here, you shouldn't see a, a huge impact to your database based off of um, the auditing and what you have turned on. Areas, um, as we mentioned, we have uh, application access, security, um, the new things there that you'll see is your problems for some of you that know or may not know. We now have, with the release of 5.8, a new problems or diagnosis module. It's broken into your SNOMED app, uh, application and values that are uh, codified in SNOMED versus your um, bill aspect or administrative side, 
which is codified in ICD. And I don't say ICD-9 or ICD-10 because it could be either depending on your time frame. Interoperability, anything that, that is connected into our system, we can also track and we'll take a look at uh, that section as well. So some, some areas that people may not have been familiar with uh, or even knew that they were being audited on is things like your PAQ, the Rosetta, um, your person information, what you're changing within the actual chart, um, you know, some really good information uh, is being tracked. How is new in 5.8? If you're meaningfully used to certification criteria, uh, that's a good thing for anybody that's trying to meet that meaningful use criteria. Record now for 5.8, as we mentioned, uh, detection. So if somebody went in there and changed something, um, so hard-coded values maybe in SQL or something along those lines, we'd be able to actually see what they tampered with. A new tool here, ex, um, you can export your data to an Excel spreadsheet and then manipulate your values or information through Excel. So we, we know we have those Excel gurus that live and die by Excel. Well, you could easily export the actual audit information. And we'll talk about this more once we get into the app and, and take a look at it. Messaging encryption over transport. So any data that's transported um, or sent out, it is encrypted, and you do have to have another utility to uh, read that encrypted information. So just keep that in mind. Only enabled after install. For some of you that have just updated to 5.8 and you're getting in and you're like, why does this keep yelling at me about Advanced audit. I don't have an advanced audit installed on my machine, but it's still telling me that advanced audit is installed. That's because it's in, it's enabled out of the box. Um, it lets you know exactly what's going on um, with advanced audit, whether it's working, it's not working, whether it's tracking or not tracking. I'll do uh, show you where to turn that on and turn it off. Uh, for your everyday users, you're probably going to want it on just for um, certain reasons to say that they've been warned that everything that they're doing is being audited. Um, there's or, or individuals that are displaying this and showing it become a bit of a nuisance, so you may want to uh, turn it off. So I'll you where to do that. New captured, and uh, uh, as I mentioned, I kind of gave a little bit of it when we were going over the, the uh, overview there, but we'll talk about it again when we get into the actual event section and we, we uh, take a look at the application. System resources and requirements. Basically, what does your client need to utilize this, this uh, tool? Uh, audit services. Um, here, looking at about 100, 100 gigabytes. Um, your audit database server is where you're looking at a little bit more, as you can see on there at the bottom, um, how much space you're actually needed. Uh, again, the same. Uh, NG database server recommendations um, allows for the database to grow. If you have 300 providers that are, are pinging your environment, obviously you're going to need more space to actually um, deal with that. So uh, just keep that in mind. You, know, you may want this on its own uh, audit server, uh, as you can see there. Entire to you, though. Installation done in conjunction with the next gen support team. As I mentioned, corporate training doesn't do anything with it. Um, the, the trainers won't do anything with it except for utilizing the actual application. So keep that in mind uh, when they're taking a look or when your clients are asking about the uh, installation. Now, the installation uh, documentation is great. It walks you through step by step exactly what you need to do, um, and it is fairly simple. So clients can do it on their own without any, uh, you know, racking up any billable hours um, perspective. All right. Remissions. I think at this point, this is where we're going to uh, switch gears and basically uh, go into the application itself and, and get a chance to see what these rights and permissions are and, and how they're all set up and what you need to do with it. So. Let's go ahead and share, let's say application. Look at that, it was actually open. 
Here I'm in my environment. I'm just going to simply go to System Admin. Uh, first thing is, is um, where the advanced audit tool uh, live. Uh, not not exactly where does it live, but where does the setup uh, take place. A lot of this stuff is going to be set up initially during the install process. So um, you may ask, you know, well, where does this come from and where does that come from? It comes from the install. So starting here with your view option, you select that and you'll see right here advanced audit setup. So if you click on the advanced audit setup, you'll see here enable advanced auditing. Right? So that's cool. That's turning it on. So audit status alerts. So I mentioned out of the box, you'll start receiving all of these alerts and these warnings about advanced audit. If you, if you put a check mark in here, it'll turn those warning off. Okay, so keep that in mind um, when dealing with it. Uh, Affect server URL. Again, this is all set up when doing the initial install through the wizard. It'll actually put that information into this window. So you won't actually have to put this in there. It should automatically put it in there. Again, uh, read through the installation process. It's essentially where is your server. Uh, that's what it's looking at. Now, if you have multiple servers, you'll see here that this is my, my actual server. I have one server set up with this, this database, and it's accepting 100% of the load. But what's really cool about the advanced audit server, so uh, to the, the capability of slowing down your system in runtime, they do the, the capability of having it dispersed to multiple servers if you needed to, meaning the data. Um, the, the stored data. So four, you could have each one take 25% of the load, or maybe you had 50% going to one, and then 25% uh, on the other, and 25% on, on the third. Um, you could do that, so if you only had three in that particular case. But just understand that this allows for you to actually uh, distribute the loads how you want. The only thing is, is that, that the load must equal out to 100%. Okay. Setup. This is basically what is it that you are tracking. Um, all this information is what we're currently tracking within the system. As you can see here, I can go down to the PAQ and I can take a look at what information is being tracked within the PAQ. Whether it's it's um, documents accepted or images rejected, it doesn't really matter. Uh, who's app accessing the system? system. Lawn log off, uh, SSO pass through, so any information that's being passed through. Uh, again, this is entirely up to the practice of what's being turned on. So I can turn this on, turn it off here in system admin. That's just one place depending on my rights and permissions. Um, so take a look at some of the rights and permissions that correspond with you have access to the advanced audit utility. Um, so and you have, have rights to do this. In order for me to come in and turn any of these off, um, I have to have rights. Now, remember that this is at the enterprise level. I'm, I, if I'm turning this off, I'm turning it off for everybody. Now, you can see it at the practice level, depending on where you are. Note here that I'm at the practice level, but if I had multiple practices, I do. It's just I'm not logged in with that particular user. I'm able to control multiple levels of it. So, again, you do have the right to turn it on at the practice level, at the enterprise level, manipulate it <clears throat> from within those particular sections. Um, here you'll see things like interoperability, the CCD creation, and um, import and export of those particular values. That's a new feature. You have your um, education is always a big one that people want to see. Um, where what is actually tracking, um, whether or not they're meeting the requirements for that. All right, those are your setup. Now let's take a look at the rights and permissions for us. Um, here you actually find that at the group level. So if I go into my group. You'll hear, well, as soon as it's up with me, 
If on your right, under your operations, you'll see administration. And right there at the top, whoop, I don't do anything with it. It's just showing at me. Right there at the top, you have your advanced audit setup. Um, this basically gives you the uh, right to manipulate that particular um, application. Um, that's audit setup. This one here, you need to be uh, pretty cautious with um, because this is going to allow them to manipulate this particular option. And the reason why I say you need to be cautious with it is because it's not just available in system admin. All right, for this, I would probably give it to the high-level administrators, and that's about it. The reason being is because you do have access to manipulate these particular values in the advanced audit setup with not only EHR, but EPM as well. Then down here, your advanced audit report tool. So I don't want to click on it, but your advanced audit report tool, this is actually giving them access to the actual utility. So there's two different uh, options there that you need to uh, be aware of. One is audit and two, your advanced audit report tool. So just keep that in mind uh, when setting up your end users. And this one up at the top here is uh, pretty significant for the simple fact that I can come into EHR and if I write to it, I can go under my admin and click on this advanced audit setup. And what? I could manipulate this for the entire practice. Right. I can go in, and if I turn something off here, guess what? It's turning it off for everybody. Okay? So you want to be cautious of what is actually on and what is not on. Now, see these little minuses and pluses? That's just meaning that there's expandable data underneath there. So you could see your chart information. If I only wanted to turn off one value, I turn that off. <clears throat> uh, it will indicate to me that something was turned off and turned on. Um, on end, that if something was turned off, and I go in and I manipulate something in the database, the audit utility is not going to capture it. It's not going to capture what you don't have turned on. Um, my recommendation is leave everything on. On. But I know science, know that they don't want it on. It's impacting performance. I, I don't believe it because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it on site import impact performance. I haven't seen it on my, my personal database uh, impact performance. But it can happen. It's not that it's um, realm. I have talked to development, and they said, yes, it can, depending on how many people and how much information is being stored in those uh, log files. It, it definitely could. But it's very rare. Uh, that the end user will see any impact to it if they have it set up properly. Be aware of who you give rights and permissions to for the advanced audit setup because they can simply do it from EHR. Would I would tell everybody know again high level admirers, you know, I would to them because sometimes they may be in EHR and they might need to be able to, to manipulate something for the advanced audit uh, right from there, that's fine. Um, but leave it in, in system admin if it, if it was really up to me, only giving it uh, access to those individuals that need it. It is in EPM as well. I'm not going to go to EPM just for the amount of time that it takes, but you will see it there as well. Uh, keep that in mind. Just take care of my advanced audit. All right, so that's that. That's that. Good. All right. So we're with the uh, system admin piece of it. <clears throat> Thing that I do within the system is being tracked because I I have everything turned on. So when I open up my patient's chart, when I when I navigate through a patient, when I open up their meds, when whatever it is that I'm doing is being tracked. Again, I'm just opening up a patient so we could see some some live data. 
uh, come through. M section, if you were in EPM, it falls under your admin and advanced audit settings, just the same as it does in uh, EHR. Now, the next piece I need to talk about is actually accessing the tool or the reporting tool. How do you actually get to it? Um, the today actually be located in the ng root files, um, so you could find it there. And once you find it, it's recommended that you um, either put it in your utilities or you just create a shortcut. So anybody that knows anything about the utilities, you can click on your utilities, come in and customize, browse to your um, G root. Right. And then what you're looking for is right here, the audit report tool .exe. That is what you're looking for for, and for your um, advanced audit. Don't confuse that with your NG audit utility. The NG audit utility is the older um, version of the advanced audit, and we we used to use them simultaneously. Um, but it's been it's been told to me that you don't actually need to use the NG audit any longer, um, but you can if you choose to. Now, from release of five six SP one forward, that it's been a little bit buggy because nobody's been doing anything with it. Just for the simple fact that we have the advanced audit that captures all the similar data. All right, so just keep that in mind with less impact. And you could go in, you could uh, pull out that uh, advanced audit tool, open it, and then add it to your uh, window here and you navigate to it from your utilities. That's one way, or you could have it on your desktop as I have here. Either way, completely functional, completely acceptable. It's entirely up to you uh, how you do it. What's really about, nice about the advanced audit uh, utility is how it authenticates your login. So if I came in here and I opened it up, click on it, it launches, right? Um, here's our, our tool. It is password protected, so again, depending on your credentials in admin is going to determine whether or not you can utilize this application. Here, under your enterprise and practice, notice that I can't do anything with it. It's grayed out. All right. Reason being is that I need to authenticate that I am who I say I am. And the system will say, okay, these are the practices that you have access to, so we'll allow you to get in there and um, see that particular information. So here I can authenticate. It'll take a couple seconds. It will then come back, and my my values that I'm a, uh, that I'm ex that I can view. Excuse me. Once satisfied with that, I simply log in. Ta da! Here is your ad your advanced audit report tool. Starting up at the top, you see your file option. You have the ability to print, print preview, uh, export to Excel. This is a new option, 5.8. One thing, the export to Excel, you do have to have Excel database. Um, there has been talk about utilizing some other type of tools to do this, um, but as of right now, you have to have Excel loaded on your server where you're running the advanced audit in order for it to export. You have your about. It's just telling you the about information for the advanced audit utility. You have the ability to trace and trace settings. So again, this is more of a troubleshooting thing for support. You do have that option. Your filter. It's just that left hand side. That whole left side there is your filter. It's basically going to determine determine at what level are you actually running the report for. What type of data is it that you're looking for? So, starting at the top level, your enterprise. You simply click on the three dot button, Norton button, ellipsis button. You'll come in, you'll see the select enterprise. If you had multiple enterprises, you would see them there. You simply click on the one that you want, put it to the right hand side for your selected, and say OK. Practice. All right, I can go into my practice. Here's all my practices. I can it. Move it over. Say, hey, 
Now, here's where it gets interesting, because they actually go down to the user level. So if there's a specific user that I wanted to see what they were actually doing, I see exactly what they were doing within the system. Right. Then I wanted to know like, if there was a high-profile patient of some sort, and I wanted to come in and see um, exactly what they were doing within that patient's chart, guess what? I, I could find that as well. Give it a second. Um, I, you, I could select that, and then I could pull up my reports. Now, actions, just recording everything doesn't necessarily mean that I have to see everything. I can go into my chart and just see who accessed that particular chart. And there is a specific time frame. I can come on down and I could say, you know what, I want to see between what date and what date um, has anybody been in to this patient's chart. Your stop date, when do you want it to stop? I'm just going to say today, right now. Your resultment, um, right now, it really doesn't matter because there's not that many people in this database. It's myself and uh, my, my corporate training team, as well as the developers, and that's it. Um, the result limit, significant if you had multiple users on your database. So if there was a potential of uh, having thousands, even millions of records. Uh, that could potentially be in and out of here, you want to be careful at which one you're, you're running. Right now, I could say all, and it's not going to uh, put a damper on my system, but imagine if you said all and you had 300 providers and 500 nurses per, per price. Uh, it definitely could uh, take a little bit to uh, run the search. Then I'll simply do, come on down, run the search, search for any auditing charts. Here it shows you who actually uh, um, went in that particular chart, what dates they were in there. There you go. There you have it. So let's go ahead and uh, start over. We could um, start at the top here. I'm on enterprise and practice. I'm just going to get rid of our, our user values as well as um, just so we have more content to view. All right, there we go. Now, here I was very meticulous at what I wanted to see. Here on this one, instead of just going with that, I'm going to select all. So I'll turn everything on. Again, <clears throat> some new uh, features that we have within 5.8 is your interoperability. The ability to see what type of data was imported and exported from within our system. The new piece that's uh, new for research is your uh, medication uh, bar checks. So you'll see here once we get up, it's a little bit higher than I anticipated. It's under there. I apologize. It moved it. But essentially, it's the um, the geric and pediatric values uh, being available to us in here as well. Oh, where is it? I'm not keep scrolling, but we have that option. Um, another option, we talked about the interoperability. Um, offense, there's actually optic events here, as you can see. All these optic events have been added. So you can actually check that. Let me just open a little bit more. Uh, you can see that information in there. Um, and it's pretty much everything that's going on within your system, you actually capture and run a report on. 
So this particular example, I'm going to leave this, including patient portal. Um, one thing that I did want to point out is your SIG events, uh, your significant events, are also being tracked when the uh, the system. So we're auditing on auditing, if uh, any sense. It, if you know your significant events, they're, they're canned uh, reports that that essentially audit information for your practice. But the advanced audit is auditing on top of uh, those values. Here's the values that we're looking for. The geriatric pediatric display uh, information. And that, that information was manipulated from a system perspective. Here I'm gonna turn off my start date. So basically since this database was ran, um, I'm gonna report. So I run a search, it's create, a audit here for me. It's going to say exactly who was in this chart, what they were doing. Uh, what's really funny is when when um, I do it in the other database where all my trainers are, I can see who was in there practicing and what they were doing and what they were modifying. What cool about it is it really does break down what you were doing. So the record was tampered. You'll see down here. Remember we said that that was a new feature, uh, tamper control. Here access. If you go on it, it'll give you a little blurb here, but down here in the data uh, detail, you can click on the drop down and you can see exactly what they were looking at, what they touched. Um, you know, it is pretty meticulous at the information uh, that was added for this particular patient, all the way down to the ox units, how many they were given, uh, the data trail again, you know, was what the value was that was associated with it. Um, basically, what happens is that when you run a report of this magnitude, it creates this hash. And it, if you run rerun another report of the same criteria, uh, it'll bounce it off of the the hash, and you'll be able to see, um, you know, whether or not anything was tampered. So this, if it was tampered with, will be a true value, and you'll be able to say, hey, something happened, and somebody. Uh, messed around with something that was in SQL or uh, in the actual database. So, a uh, cool functionality there within the actual application. Now, just going to look at it, looking at your details. Again, you can see all of the different values by simply scrolling through. If there's numerous pages, you can move uh, forward to the next page, the next page, the next page, and so on. Um, up top, you'll see the ability to view or do a print preview. I can call on that print preview. Generate my, uh, my print document if I were to print it. You'll see at the top the report information. Uh, essentially what is going on, what I was uh, reporting on, what information I wanted to see. And you'll be able to see all of that information. This is just saying that these are the actions that are being Reported in here. Then below, you'll be able to see exactly what was going on. For some of you that know the NG Audit Utility, you'll understand that the usability, the user interface, or the GUI that's associated with this advanced audit is 10 times better than what we had to deal with in the past. What does that mean? Well, in the past, in order for us to know whose actual um, user was, you had to know how to go into system admin and search by an ID, by a user ID, that 177. It didn't tell you exactly who it was. When you came into your enterprise and practice, you didn't know that you know, enterprise, uh, next gen medical enterprise was 001 and the practice was 0001. You had to know that sort of detail within the actual system in order to see and know exactly what was going on. Here, you won't really need to. You could sit and read it. It's legible. Um, it has a really nice interface for your end users um, so they could go in, they could see exactly what's going on within this uh, exact report. I mentioned to you up at the top, you can print your report if you needed to. It'll show exactly how you just reviewed the print preview. Let's see you see your uh, 
export to Excel. Uh, if you had Excel on this machine, which I do not, you would be able to actually uh, um, export this data to Excel. Making okay. sure that there is nothing that I missed. Looking at my checkbox here. Uh, that is pretty much it. I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint. And there's a couple things that I wanted to review here. As I mentioned to you earlier, there's a new feature for the uh, report. So if somebody tampered with thing, you would see it here as I um, is a record tampered with, and you'll see that it actually comes through with a true value. That's one thing that I wanted to show you. Um, here we've already talked about the ability to um, export to Excel. That's new to 5.8. There are reference materials out um, or should be out on nextgen.com uh, within the next week or two. Um, that's your 5.8 audit report tool user guide and the uh, advanced audit installation guide. So they basically walk you through how to utilize this application. Again, pretty easy, pretty, um, pretty functionality from, from to stop, uh, start to bottom. At this point, it concludes our